main engine start. We have main engine start. America's space shuttle lifts off on its historic mission, but there's a minor problem with the heat shield. And the morning after in Brixton, South London, the ruins which symbolize a night of violence. The Home Secretary has been to the scene himself, and there's been more trouble this evening. So to begin with, at the second attempt, the space shuttle is at last in orbit around the, worth, uh, around the Earth. At exactly one o'clock this afternoon, the Columbia craft was blasted off its launch pad at Cape Canaveral and began the test flight that's due to last until Tuesday evening. But when the first television pictures came back from space, they revealed a problem. Some of the thousands of tiles that protect the shuttle from overheating had fallen off during the launch. Those weren't vital, but now American officials on Earth are photographing the whole craft to see if any more tiles are missing. Reporting first from Cape Canaveral, our correspondent Martin Bell. Early morning on pad 39A. Take two for the launch of the Columbia, for the pilot, Bob Crippen, and for the commander, John Young. From the breakfast to the suiting up to the later pre-flight routines, everything was just as it had been 48 hours before, but this time, even more encouragement from their colleagues at Cape Canaveral. And another difference. This time, the computers on the Columbia were on speaking terms with each other. The countdown was smooth, and with minutes to go, the launch controller, George Page, read the astronauts a message from the president. Once again, we feel the surge of pride that comes from knowing we are the first and we are the best, and we are so because we are free. And the shuttle's commander had a message. Uh, good night, mighty proud to work with you, fellas. You're, you're absolutely professional. The best there is. And so, to the final moments of the countdown, and the voice was the voice of launch control. Minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. We've gone for main engine start. We have main engine start. America's first space shuttle. And the shuttle has cleared the tower. Here was the turn as the spaceship Columbia, now on her back, marched out over the Atlantic. Two minutes after liftoff, and according to plan, the solid rocket boosters broke away in two balls of fire. A little over an hour later, the first pictures of the shuttle in space were received. The view from the payload door. We do have a, uh, a few tiles missing off of, uh, of both of them. Uh, off of the uh, starboard pod, uh, there's got basically what looks appears to be three uh, tiles and some smaller pieces. These are not critical tiles. Uh, these tiles that are missing uh, represent no hazard to the vehicle or the crew. Uh, the worst that can happen is that after landing, a small patch of skin underneath the tiles may have to be replaced. And on the ground, where the problems with the tiles were not yet known, the mood was jubilation. This has been a project beset with so many delays, frustrations, cost overruns, that the delight of the crowd at the moment of final launch was extraordinary as soon as they saw that it was going well. And this was how they reacted. <laughs> Former astronaut Neil Armstrong, the first man on the moon. Well, it was a beautiful sight, and uh, we're delighted it's going so well, and uh, I understand that uh, uh, it's good. there's nothing, uh, nothing wrong at the present time, and, and that's always a great surprise to the crew. They uh, usually expect a few things going, going wrong. And George Page, the launch director. Hey, next time you all ought to buy flags and bring them. It's a proud day for America, too. Martin Bell, BBC, at the Kennedy Space Center. Justification for flag-waving and applause in that successful launch. 
but there is still the nagging problem of the heat-resistant tiles. This is typical of the 30,000 individually shaped tiles that cover much of Colombia. It's an extraordinary material. You can hold it in your bare hands on one side while the other side is red hot. Now we know from those in-flight television shots that a number have come off the engine pods here and here. NASA engineers seem certain that this represents no threat to the safety of the flight, but an hour ago they were using high-resolution cameras on aircraft to try to scan the underside of the orbiter, where the astronauts can't see, to check that all the tiles there are still in position. The tiles are an incredibly complex solution to the problem of protecting the orbiter. Today's problem emphasises the fact that if they really want this to be a commercially successful space transport system, they'd better start looking for a different solution. No scientist or industrialist is going to be very keen on risking investment or equipment if it's not going to be properly protected against the appalling heat that's generated when the orbiter comes back into the Earth's atmosphere. This will be the most dangerous part of the journey.